In this video, I'm going to unbox and review the Dawa IPC HDW 4631C IP camera. So this is the model number for your reference. And this is a 6 megapixel camera. It's got a single IR light LED. It's a 2.8 millimeter, although you can get it in a 3.6 or a 6 millimeter. It has face to -face detection capability depending on the software that you have on your NVR. And it can give you up to 3072 by 2048 resolution at 20 frames per second. Right, so unboxing it, you're going to get the screwdriver here. This is a Torx screwdriver. There's some other documentation there. The grommet for your, when you do your Ethernet connection, well, this will be on the other side and you will just pull this up and that's your watertight Ethernet connection. And if you do not use power over Ethernet and you have a separate power cable, well, there you'll plug it in there. But most probably you'll just use power over Ethernet and that's all you'll need to get this camera on the road. Right, having a look at the camera, first thing you'll notice is that it is pretty solid. This is a metal casing camera. So you can see that it is actually metal and it, it's heavy. So looking at the front of it, you'll see there is the single infrared LED and this is obviously the microphone hole and there is the actual six, millimeter, uh, six megapixel lens. And just looking at the body, you can see that it is a, I wouldn't call it smooth, it's got a bit of a brushed, uh, um, painted aluminum feel. It is pretty heavy. This is heavier than the usual camera. This weighs 0.478 kilograms. So it's, it's point, almost 0.5 kilograms. You'll need to adjust this here. You'll need to loosen that. This is a tamper-proof uh, IP camera as you can see as I adjust that how it opens here and what is actually happening is that screw is actually wedging in there and then there is the camera body itself and it is IP67 to get an IP67 rating you must uh, make sure that your device can be immersed in water up to one meter so this is fully waterproof up to one meter well according to the IP67 standard and then to screw it into your uh, wall or your ceiling well there we go you got four holes here and it's pretty solid as you can see this is steel this is much more rugged than the plastic uh, cameras that we are very used to nowadays all right so this is the unboxing and it's important to, to actually do a review on this and to see how this camera actually performs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up uh, here are some screws if you do need these these happen to be plugs and screws uh, if you are installing it into a wall well there's your screws if you're installing it into a rhino board or a ceiling you might need the butterfly screws uh, here is an example of a butterfly screw so if you are using these there's the butterfly screw and then keep in mind that this hole is not very big so you will there's the butterfly screw going in there nicely and you will install the other side there and what will happen is you'll drill your hole in the ceiling and then that will open so just to give you an idea of this hole so you know what size butterfly screw you're using it is four mil so you will need to use a screw that is less than five mil so this happens to be a three mil screw and now it's time to actually install this thing and give you uh, some feedback on how this little number performs Right, just on the setup side, once you've connected your your new camera to your NVR, just remember to go and make the uh, resolution adjustment because if you want to get the top performance from the 6 megapixel camera, you're going to have to manually make some adjustments. So here I've set it to 3072 by 2048. I've also set it to the highest bit rate that is uh, selectable unless you do the customized range but i don't think you can actually increase it more than the 10 yeah you can't so the 10 to 40 is the highest kilobits per second and then obviously the frame rate now this camera can do 
3072 by 2048 to 20 frames per second. I am going to show you some video snippets of various recordings I've done. So just a reminder that you must do this manually, whether you do it through the web login or whether you do it through Smart PSS. Here we go. It's the same story whether you're on Smart PSS. You will also have to make the adjustments. Uh, this is a different NVR. I'm just showing you that you will have to come and make your adjustments on the uh, um, internal side here otherwise you will not get that full resolution okay just to show you uh, the different resolutions these are some of the downloaded videos that I have captured and I am going to show you them uh, shortly but I just want to show you one thing first look at the length of this video this says 3 minutes and 25 seconds and this is 3 minutes and 26 seconds and I've done that for a reason if I show you the uh, where is it the details can you see the frame width is the resolution resolution is 2560 by 1440 at a very low data rate now this was the default setting when I plugged in the camera this is the default setting and just keep in mind that look at that size 82 megs while it, while look at this video if I show you the specs of this video then you'll see that the specs are 3072 by 2048 and look at that data rate. So how I know that the resolution is up just by looking at the file, look at that 272 megs versus 82 megs. So just be aware of this. If you are doing camera tests, you can't just plug in the camera and assume it to be at its uh, maximum specification. It's not going to be like that. You're going to have to do it manually. All right, so I am now going to uh, show you some of the videos that I have downloaded. And I've got some at the medium resolution and some at the full resolution. And I'm going to start with the night shots. And the reason why I'm starting with the night shots is that's where we really see if a camera is clear or not. Because most cameras by night get pretty poor in terms of their um, resolution, in terms of how good, uh, clear you can see the images. So I'm going to do a night shot, then I'm going to do indoor, and then I'm going to take it outside and show you the outdoor images. Okay, in order for this to be a, a, a good review, I will also upload these videos directly to YouTube uh, or maybe I'll create a link where you can watch these videos in its native format. Why I say that is because obviously you're watching this on your monitor and your monitor may not be 4K and that's not the fault of the camera. You see this video here, for example, if you look at it, how are you going to watch this on, on YouTube if uh, firstly you uh, don't have a 4K monitor? So this is something to think about, that when you are watching these videos, uh, you might, might need a 4K monitor. All right, so let's have a look at the different uh, videos. Right, so this is the night test. There is no lights on in this room, absolutely pitch black. So what you're seeing is myself walking towards the camera and the only reason why you're seeing me is because of the infrared. If you look at the camera in the night, you will see a little red uh, light. That is the infrared. So the camera does show a red light. Yes, hello, I'm waving at you. And that's the night view. It's fairly clear. I'm quite satisfied with this view. Keep in mind that the resolution is only 2560 by 1440. And it's at quite a low bit rate of 4075. So the uh, raw files I will upload but this is just to give you an idea of the night shot and it is still clear I mean, you can actually see the uh, detail there a lot of the, um, the carpeting uh, overall I'm satisfied with this uh, you might notice that the infrared light does focus in the center of the the picture um, unfortunately the sides are not as well lit as the center so maybe that is a slight weakness there but overall I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, performance. Hi, so now I'm testing the camera it is about 1200 lumens so between 950 and 1200 lumens so it's not very bright this is indoor I consider this medium brightness. As you can see, there's the lux meter. You can see that it's below 1,200 lumens. So this is not a bright area. 
I am about two and a half meters away from the camera. Let's do a text test. So this is a Panasonic phone, and you can read that, I'm sure, that says Panasonic. But just to give you an idea of the size, this is 65 mils by 7 mils. So you're looking at about 65 mils by 7 mils. And if we look at the smaller text, we're looking at about 25 mils by 5 mils. So if you are reading this, that is a 20 by 5 mil. That is a 5 mil text. So if, if I was wearing a name tag, like there, there's a name tag, you can clearly read the name tag. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the table and have a look at when you, the zoom function. There we go. And the lumens at this point. Okay, so it's brighter here, getting some outdoor uh, light coming in. So that's at about 2,000, 2,100 lumens. But keep in mind, this is indoor. And one of the things that people forget is that when you're testing a camera, it might be amazing outside, but indoor. Now, this is not very bright. And you can have a look at 2,100. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close these curtains here. And now we are down to about 300 lumens. So this is what the camera is like under what I would call medium to low lighting. Not, not completely dark, but it's, this is definitely not bright. These are uh, fairly dim lights, and we're looking at less than 400 lumens. And as you can see, the camera is doing pretty well. <clears throat> Okay, so here's some more footage while I quickly just review what we went through. The uh, audio that you were hearing was the audio which is was picked up by the little microphone on the camera. Overall, it's above average. I can give it a thumbs up. That audio was good. It doesn't sound like that muffled or very narrow uh, band, narrow, narrow band audio. I would say that the camera performed well. And I'm now going to show you some footage from outdoor recordings and let, really put this camera through the the test right so here the camera is installed outside it is in the late afternoon and this is a winter's afternoon so here in uh, my local town the sun is down by half past five six so this is late afternoon you can see the long shadows uh, there are some challenges when you have these long shadows and uh, I have some videos on dealing with that but that's not part of this video. Overall you can see how the camera is on the default brightness, default contrast ratio, no uh, dynamic uh, uh, noise reduction. It's just the default except for the resolution is at the maximum. So here you're just seeing some footage, maybe there'll be some activity. I will zoom in. Uh, I am not on the camera. The camera doesn't have a zoom facility, but I am going to use the software. I'm using Sony Vegas. I'm going to do some zooming in to actually show you how, uh, how clear the camera is and how we can actually see things quite far away. Okay, so here I'm going to zoom in. I'm, I've just zoomed in using Sony Vegas. There you can see at the bottom of the road. Obviously, it's going to be uh, unclear now, but just keep in mind that that's like uh, at least uh, 50 meters away. Okay, just to show you a bit more on the resolution, you know, with uh, human faces, there's Michael walking, and you can see that it's pretty clear and it's not at full light i suppose if it was early in the day you would even see more uh, uh, clarity there but it is still very clear away for the camera and i'll zoom in a bit using the digital zoom okay remember i said the camera doesn't come with zoom but there you can see i've actually zoomed in quite a lot on sony vegas just showing you how much information is in the the uh the footage there you can see and it's quite smooth. Remember, it's only 20 frames per second, but it's smooth enough. Obviously, if you're running, there will be some jitter, but there, there's some movements. Overall, uh, there's no problems here. 
And one final test is trying to zoom at a distance and see human faces at a distance. Now, I will uh, let Michael walk down the road a bit. And then I'll try and zoom in and we can actually see if we can still see uh, uh, his face and how clear it is. So let's compare uh, over, over here at a further distance. And I'm going to zoom in and you shall see shortly. And there we go. So I've zoomed in quite a bit and you can still make out the face and uh, overall it's fine. There's not a problem with this camera. You can see clearly what's going on. Obviously it is zoomed so you're going to lose a bit of uh, clarity. I am going to do a, a comparison between this camera and a 2 megapixel and a, a 4 megapixel. Uh, a pre preliminary I've done some uh, informal tests and there is a difference. You can see a difference in a 4 and a 6 megapixel. And this is bringing me to the end of this video now. Right, so to sum up, this camera is very good. Six megapixels with the audio. The audio I find very useful and it's useful for offices and schools, especially when you, where you want to record conversations. And the, the conversations, the quality of the recording was, was above average. All right, I got the camera from a company called Jimbu. Uh, I got it online at AliExpress. The service was very good. The, uh, the emails are replied to very promptly for $70. It's a 6 megapixel IP camera. I haven't seen a 6 megapixel camera that can compare with this camera at this price. So overall, I do recommend it. The supplier, Jimbu, was very prompt. They sent me the camera within five days. I received it all the way to South Africa. I believe it comes from China or Hong Kong. I'm not sure. And uh, the uh, supplier is very professional and uh, sent it very quickly. And the packaging was perfect. The camera was in good order. So overall, I uh, hope this was video was informative. I will be doing some more videos on this camera comparing the uh, 6 megapixel with a 4 megapixel and a 2 megapixel, etc. But overall, thanks for watching. Cheers.